Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Virtual Preschool. I am so glad you have decided to join me for circle time today. You can see I'm trying to uh, camouflage today with our bulletin board because I'm wearing yellow. So i kind of blending in. Hopefully you can still see me. <laughs> All right, so let's see what the day of the week is. The last day of school was Monday. Tuesday. So today is Wednesday. Yes. So let's move our rainbow arrow down to Wednesday. All right. Who remembers the name of our month? April. Yes. So let's go ahead and count those numbers. Oh, and remember what we've been saying all month, April showers bring May flowers. All right. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, 24, 25, 26, and what comes next? 27, and let's figure out our pattern. Umbrella, umbrella, flower, flower. Umbrella, umbrella, what comes next? Flower, yes, so we have a number 27 with a flower on it. All right, so that was yesterday. That was a threes class day. 25, 26, 27. What comes next? 28, and the pattern. Umbrella, umbrella, flower, flower. Umbrella, umbrella, flower. What comes next? Flower, yes, so we have a number 28 with a flower on it. All right, so remember that I mentioned last week that this is going to be the last week of April. So you can see right here, we're almost to the end. So next week, when we come back, we have still another day on Friday, but next week when we come back, it will be a whole new month. So I'm going to encourage you to find out what month it is going to be next week. Ask your parents or grandparents or um, look on a calendar and figure out what the month is going to be so that you know already next week. Okay, let's say the whole date. So today is Wednesday, April 28th, 2021. All right, let's figure out the weather. So look out your window. And when you look out your window, is it partly cloudy? cloudy, sunny, windy, rainy, stormy, or snowy. And if you step out the door, does it feel burning hot, hot, warm, cool, cold, or freezing cold? And don't forget to look up the temperature or the number for the temperature on your weather app. All right, so this week we've been talking all about one of my very favorite things. You remember seeds, and it's one of my very favorite things because seeds grow into plants, and I love growing plants. So we talked a little bit about seeds with our book on Monday, but I have, this is actually a brand new book this year. It's, pretty, it's a pretty nice book. There's a whole series of these books that I really like. So let's see what it is in our mystery envelope. So this book is called A Seed is Sleepy. And you can see there are some pictures of different kinds of seeds on the front of the book here. So let's find out about seeds. So here's a picture. The very front shows a whole bunch of different kinds of seeds. Boy, seeds, they don't all look alike, do they? Each one is different. All right. 
A seed is sleepy. It lies there, tucked inside its flower, on its cone, or beneath the soil, snug, still. So this is a picture of a sunflower, probably it looks like a giant sunflower, at the end of its sunflower life. All right, up here you can see these are sunflower seeds that are growing in the middle of the sunflower. And around the edge, there used to be those beautiful sunflower petals. And then down here, we see some of the seeds have fallen into the dirt, right? A seed is secretive. It does not reveal itself too quickly. Most seeds sleep through a season or two, waiting for the warmer temperatures of spring. But some take their time. Ten years might pass before the bright red-orange seed of the Texas mountain laurel. Oh, that's this, sorry. Nope, they're both, that's the seed pod. Of the Texas mountain laurel shows its purple blooms. So there are the seeds of the Texas mountain laurel that can take up to 10 years before you see their beautiful purple flowers. It's a long time to wait for flowers, isn't it? A seed is fruitful 90%, so, and the top is 100, all right? of the plants on earth are flowering plants. Flowering plants produce fruits, fruits of all shapes and textures that keep the seeds cozy until they have found the right place to grow. So if you did the project that um, I talked about on Monday, where you go to the grocery store and buy fruits and vegetables and you cut them open and you see the seeds inside, right? So uh, most seeds produce a flower that then produces some kind of fruit or vegetable. All right, so these are lots of different kinds here. I can see some blueberries and papaya and strawberries. What else is there on here? Some of the ones you wouldn't know. Texas barberry is down over here. Some of these are ones probably a lot of you haven't seen before. A seed is naked. Yes, naked. Who would guess that a seed as small as a freckle would grow into the world's tallest tree? Only 10% of redwood trees begin as seeds, though. Most redwood trees spring from existing trees. So there are little tiny seeds in here. Let me read this over here. Scientists call, gymnos call gymnosperms seeds that aren't clothed in fruits, naked seeds. Most naked seeds hide themselves on the scales of cones until they're ready to make a dash for the ground. So there are tiny little seeds and actually at our old preschool location, these were all over the ground. Then they looked like this most of the time when we saw them, but eventually they would break open like this. All right, so there's seeds inside there, but they're called naked seeds because they're not inside a fruit. Seeds come in many sizes. The orchid seed is the smallest, you can see them kind of floating around over here, of them all. There might be a million seeds in one pod. The seed of the coco de mer palm is the largest. It can weigh up to 60 pounds. Okay, that's heavier than most of you are. Most of you are not 60 pounds, but this seed weighs up to 60 pounds. Big seed. A seed is adventurous. It must strike out on its own in search of a less crowded place to put down roots. A parachute of fine silky hairs can take a dandelion seed 100 miles from its parent plant. So you know when you see the dandelions out right now, most of them are yellow, but pretty soon they're gonna to turn to the white fluff. And each one of those little white fluff pieces on there holds a seed and it can float away. It says up to 100 miles away from its flower that it came from. That's pretty amazing. There's also these other kinds of seeds that kind of travel through the wind. This is a Japanese maple seed and that's called a helicopter seed because it kind of goes around like this when it floats like a helicopter. 
drift seeds float on ocean currents from one shore to another. They have enough air inside to help them float, and their thick protective shells keep out seawater. So these are all seeds that will float on the water. This one I think is kind of funny. Look at it. What does it look like to you? What does that, what does that seed look like? It looks like a hamburger, doesn't it? It's actually called ha a hamburger bean. <laughs> I thought that one was pretty funny. But these seeds all travel by floating on water. So these seeds travel by floating in the air. These seeds travel by floating on water. A seed is inventive. To find a spot to grow, a seed might leap from its pod or cling to a child's shoestring or tumble through a bear's belly. Do you know what that means? That means the bear eats the seeds and then he poops them out and then they grow. Isn't that funny? Yeah, it's pretty funny. A seed hopes to land where there is plenty of sunlight, soil, and water. So these seeds travel by kind of launching themselves out of the, out of the plant, getting stuck on our clothing or our shoes, going into a bear's belly and getting pooped out later. So seeds travel in lots of different ways. So far they've talked about traveling through the air, traveling through the water, traveling on clothing, traveling on an animal or in an animal. A seed is generous. It gives the baby plant or embryo a seed coat to keep it warm. So this is the baby plant right here or the embryo. This is the seed coat. The embryo's first meal comes from its seed leaves or cotyledons. So this part here is the cotyledon and that's where the plant gets the food, its food from. Seeds with one leaf, seed leaf like corn are called monocots. Seeds with two seed leaves like beans are called dicots. So we aren't going to talk too much about that, but we do have a couple projects that talk about the parts of a seed, which are the seed coat around the outside. That's what protects the seed. The embryo or baby plant right here, that's the part that's going to grow into the plant. And the cotyledon, which is the food that feeds the baby plant. Some seeds are ancient. Not all seeds are eager to germinate. Germinate means to sprout. Some have lain dormant or slept undisturbed for more than a thousand years. The oldest known seed to sprout came from an extinct date palm tree. Does anyone remember what extinct means? We talk about that with the dinosaurs a lot. Yeah, extinct means that there are, they are not left any, they're gone, right? After it was unearthed from a long ago king's mountaintop palace in Israel, a scientist planted it. Four weeks later, it sprouted. That's amazing. A seed that was thousands of years old sprouted and grew a plant from, or grew a plant that was extinct. That means there weren't any more of them. <laughs> Pretty amazing. A seed is thirsty and hungry. Once a seed has shed its coat, remember the outside part called the seed coat? It drinks in the rain, the dew, and yesterday's icicles and snow. It feasts on minerals in the soil. Part of the seed, the root, feels the tug of gravity and digs down deep. So the root goes down first. Another part of the seed, the shoot, is sensitive to light so it reaches up for the sun. So the roots and the shoot. And we'll be talking about more, more about the parts of a plant next week. A seed is clever. It knows to seek the sunlight, to push itself up, up, up through the soil, but it must wait a while before that happens. A seed is sleepy, but only until it has found a place in the sun and it has had its breakfast and a drink of water. Then a seed is awake.
And there are some pictures of some giant sunflowers. And there are some more pictures of seeds in the back. All right, so that was a lot of good information about seeds, wasn't it? So today I'm going to show you a project from your packet that is about the parts of a seed, all right? So you have a brown piece of paper like this, and you have another piece of paper that looks like this. These are the parts of a seed that we're going to talk about, okay? So, and this is where you're going to glue it. So you're also going to need crayons or markers and scissors and a glue stick. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is color my seed. So um, I'm going to color the biggest part brown. That's my seed coat. Now the seed coat isn't necessarily the color brown. It depends on the seed, right? Whatever the outside color of the seed is. You could also leave this white, okay? Because some seeds are white on the outside, but I'm, I'm just coloring mine brown so you can see it a little bit better. All right, so there's the outside of my seed, the seed coat. Then the inside, I'm going to color a kind of um, where is it? peachy color. This is apricot, but this is fine. So this crayon is called an apricot color. And the inside of your seeds might be slightly different colors, but I think usually they're kind of a lightish color on the inside. Now this is supposed to be, this looks kind of like a kidney bean seed to me. So there's the inside. Remember, so this is the seed coat. This is the cotyledon, which is the food for the plant. And this up here is the baby plant or the embryo. All right, so I'm gonna color that part green. Now when you look at a seed the first time, like if you did the project that I mentioned, if you do the project that I mentioned in your packet about soaking a seed, you will see that the inside, the, the embryo is not green right away. Okay, but that is going to be the embryo or the baby plant. Then we need to cut these pieces out, all right? We're just going to cut on the line, remembering to keep our thumb up when we cut. Cut out the seed coat, and now I am cutting out the cotyledon, which is the food that the plant eats when it starts to grow from the seed. And then the embryo or the baby plant. That can go in the recycling. So I have all the parts. I have the seed coat, the part that protects the seed, the cotyledon, which is the seed food, and the embryo or baby plant. All right, so now we're gonna glue all of these on this brown piece of paper so that uh, the seed coat goes first because that is on the outside of the seed, right? So you're gonna put some glue on that and stick it down. So there is my seed coat. Then we're gonna do the cotyledon. 
some glue on that and stick it down on top of the seed coat so that is inside this is like an inside view if you were to open the seed up and then the embryo or baby plant all right so there is the embryo so we have the seed coat the cotyledon which is the food and the embryo which is the baby plant all right then the other activity i have to show you is a matching activity now yours is not in a baggie and yours is not laminated but you have the same cards all right so you have pictures of the seeds that go with the with plants lots of different seeds and then you have pictures of the plants that they go with that they match to okay so you're going to put out your seeds or your plants whichever ones you want to do first doesn't matter to me And then you're going to match up the plants. So here is a dandelion. So I'm going to match it with the dandelion seeds, which remember from the book are those fluffy things, those fluffy white things. So the dandelion, the dandelion seeds. Then let's see here. Ah, here is an oak tree and acorns. Acorns are the kind of seed that an oak tree makes and that it grows from. All right, so then I'm gonna do one more. Let's see. Here is a picture of an apple tree, and here are apple seeds. All right, so you'll match all those up. You can also look at the words on the bottom because some of the first word on each of the cards is going to be the same word. So dand so this says dandelion seeds. This says dandelion flower. So you can match those up. Okay, and then when you're done, you're going to put your cards back together and that is what I have to share with you today I hope you have a great rest of your day today don't forget about let's let's see oh, some of you have a small group today at 10 30 all right um, and don't forget about packet pickup on Friday bye everyone